Hello and welcome everybody. So this little guide is obviously going to talk about Wimprints, um, kind of kind of more along the lines of the progression of the Wimprints as well as what you should be investing in accordingly. So this will go hand in hand with my progression guide as well as team building guide um, whenever that one especially gets done. Those will be linked in the description down below. As well as I'll have two other guides linked in the description as well in which this was ba mostly based off of and this is more or less my own flair as well as this being in video format in case if this is a format you guys do learn better but just in case if you guys do prefer to read everything I will have those linked in the description as well. So on that note, Wimprints. These are these are a can of worms. A lot of people do tend to ask questions about Wimprints, about what builds, what's good, what's not, should I buy this? Stuff like that. So this is more or less going to be what's good, and especially for you early game players who lack Eldwater considerably, this will help you guys get up and running as well. So immediately to start off, we are going to talk about what Wimprints truly do, okay? So first of all, there are several things Wimprints do, right? They can they can increase strength, they can increase crit rate, they, they, they increase your skill damage, they can increase how fast you get skills, how, how long skills last via buffing and stuff like that. Wimprints are, in short, your bread and butter when it comes to team building. So... There are some things to keep in mind. Some Wimprints, they do have... Well, when I say some, all Wimprints, they have a certain cap, right? Um, I'm actually going to go in-game uh, for this one. Um, let's uh, let's take, uh, for example, uh, let's take uh, this Wimprint right here, okay? This this is a Flurry Strength Wimprint, all right? Whenever you hit a certain combo count, you gain 20% strength, all right? This caps at 20%. Now, however, if I were to take another uh, Wimprint, I'm just going to fill this to Strength, that way it is easier on me. Uh, let's say, for example, I'll to take uh, this, this this Peckering Print. Um, when HP is 13%, I'm mean, when HP is 70% or higher, your, your Strength is increased by 13%. This shares that 20% cap. So, this means that because they share a cap, you should not run, you should not run them together. How I, I realize I messed up a, a, a the text on these. God damn it! So do not screenshot this one. Do not screenshot this one. All right. Listen to my words instead. I, I realize I messed up on this one. Damn it! So close. So close. But however, though, if I were to take another one print, um, I'm going to go down to you over here. Um, this has a different type of effect, right? Increase in strength for 15 seconds each time a defense buff up is received. But this has a cap of 15%. And also, how this print generally works is that it works differently. It's not a passive effect, it's actually a buffing effect. So, this can stack on top of your other strength prints. So this is all stuff to keep in mind when it comes to the team building process. So, so at this point, um, now... Now, especially for you uh, beginners, all right? This is especially geared to you beginners right now. Um, just if uh, just if you're already uh, further along and wanting to know better general stuff, um, I'll probably uh, leave a timestamp, or you can just uh, skim around a little bit. Surely you'll find it, I bet. So, you beginners, what are some prints you want to have immediately? Now, though, these prints, these are incredibly budget options. Some can be used in later game content as well, but these are going to be very, very cheap to work up on the Eldwater department. Um, um, if my math is correct, um, this all should add up to, give or take, 40,000 Eldwater, just for a very, very simple team when starting out. So, immediately, we're going to go to a good strength print, all right? This, this event is in the event compendium, even though it says Fire Emblem, don't worry, you can still, you can still acquire it. This, this is a, this is a 13% strength print as long as your HP is a certain threshold. This, this is a very good print to have, comes max unbound. You typically want three or four copies. I would say make around three, three copies for now, just if you need the fourth, a go for it. It is cheap to make on Eldwater, so do not worry about that. 
but also to show where, where this is, I'm in, I'm in the quest tab right now. You go down to event compendium and, and, well, and right now it's up there, but, well, typically it'll be down here with, with the other fire emblem event. Um, you do it, uh, you start to play around. Um, it is obtained through an endeavor being, being a, you need to clear a certain type of stage like 30 times and you will be able to acquire it. Should not be that hard. You can do it on the lowest difficulty and you will be able to own that print pretty easily. So next one is going to be a basic skill damage 30% print. This one you do need to max, max unbind and once again, uh, three or four copies. But it is also, once again, in the event compendium, via the, the Accursed Archives, in which also a facility event is. And this is and this is going to be also a very good print, mainly used on DPS as well. Just a very, very solid print. And which will also, also, same tab, it's right there. Uh, facility level, and which will, all, which will obviously, you should be doing these for the facilities as well, because this is just very, very nice to have. And and the last one from the event compendium will be will be um will be um slice of dragon eagle. That's it. The name almost escaped me for a minute. So 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 this one you need max on mind, but you but you don't need to worry about copies immediately because because this will be paired up with another print I will show a little bit later on. To as of where it will still be able to to do its job. So don't worry about copies immediately. But but you should max unbind it be, because this will because this will charge your skills at the start of the quest by up to 50%, which is going to be really really good on certain units. And paired with another print, it will go up to 100%. So for right now, do not worry about copies all that much. Copies you will you will get at you should do as you need them. So moving on to. So well, that's about it for event compendium prints. You beginners should be getting as of for as of for where where other prints will be. Um, you go to, to this little shop tab right here, and it will be under the win print tab here. I purchased every single I own every single win print in the game. So so for this, you will see options. You'll see like recommended options. Don't worry about the recommended options right now. This those will come more into effect. A little later on where you start to get a better acquisition L L water. And yes, I have 1.7 million L water. Do not worry about it. Soon that will go down the drain, I'm willing to bet. But however, here are some good, good, very early game prints you guys should should worry about. Um, this first one right here, um, this is gonna be a this is gonna be a dragon prep print. Um, you want to max and bind it, obtain, obtain, uh, four copies should be pretty good there. Um, and, and the next four, um, in this order will be a broken punisher, flurry devastation, AKA it'll be crit rate whenever you hit a certain combo count. Just, just like, just like, just like that flurry strength I showed earlier. Um, uh, next one will be another skill prep. Once again, up to 50% can pair beautifully with the slice of the drag mule. And last one is a buff time print. Now though, now though those last four that are of the silver border, you should not worry about unbinds or copies yet. Just acquiring them is more than enough in order to try to get you by. As of for that um, bronze border, you do want to max and bind all four copies, have it on all your units. It is just going to help you out immensely. And also, um, as a as a little bonus, I do actually have a little sample team for you guys here. And some sample prints that way you guys can know how to organize them as well i do have chimera weapons equipped because typically this type of setup it should last you up until chimera if not a little bit after so do bear that in mind once when you hit around that point you do want to start to find lr uses in order to try and maximize your units without your dominion slots dominion slots i'll get to in a little bit just know that with those your print combinations start to explode <laughs> pretty much so starting out, very easy. Um, you will have your skill damage. Your your main unit will have flurry strength and flurry devastation because you will be the one keeping the combo. So therefore, you should be able to have these up at all times. And those are like the three most important things when it comes to equipping onto a DPS. You want the skill damage, strength, and crit rate. A anything else is kind of little extra mixed in there. 
and the shapeshift prep this will this will help you get dragons quicker it will help you with with your dps in the very early game especially especially when you are starting to struggle a little bit and which will and which will now for and which will now for a healer i have i've clear here for, for example i just have strength on because because well, once again this is very budget you will typically want something else in that slot when you start to get more Eldwater, but that is very budget for right now. Uh, uh, skill prep, uh, Cleo, Cleo once when she once when she has her once when she has one one of her abilities uh, worked up, it's up to seventy five percent. So so this fifty percent will max it out to one hundred percent. So that will be just fine. Uh, the buffs, uh, the buffs, the buff skill time that will that will help with her defense buffs and her and her HP regen. Um, um, it obviously won't be a 20%. And once again, the shapeshift prep, that's obviously there. Uh, Ranzel here, um, very, very similar situation, ex except that he doesn't have the flurry strength. He's not meant to have flurries. He is perfectly fine at staying at that HP threshold. Broken Punisher, because, because, well, the, so there is a standard crit rate, but it's not as good as a flurry. And once again, he's not meant for flurries. So it's a broken punisher. This will this will help when the enemy hits to the break state. This will help just just make sure he is dead in once when you hit break. Really helpful. And also shape your prep is still very good. Then moving on to Ellie San. Um Ellie San does have a damaging skill, so therefore you can get by with skill damage, strength, because once again, no flurries. Skill prep does help her out quite a bit. She does have buff time built in, so you don't need to worry about that. But however, if you do want to make her skills last even longer, you can absolutely make a copy of of this buff time skill over here and equip it onto Ellie San. That is perfectly fine. But however, copies, those are a completely other ball game. I'll get to that in a little bit. And shape chip prep once again. So so well, even though it says max, max 10%. It only applies to that unit. So, so technically speaking, you can have 40% shape ship prep right here and and only be 10% away from having a drag. So this is gonna be very, very nice and handy to have. So so feel free to take a screenshot accordingly and and etc. etc. So so that's it for, for very, very early game stuff, but also a couple other things to note as well. You have these prints. How do you level them? How do you level them up? The best place to get the material is via the Kindred Ties event. Um, you will be able to face a stage. Uh, you'll be facing Krom on the normal difficulty. This is the best place to get them. Uh, just so that I can show you where it is exactly. Um, I don't think I have it exactly downloaded. No, I do not. So therefore, I cannot show you. Because guess what? I'm lazy when it comes to some of this stuff. So, so yeah. Um, you will. Uh, you'll just have to uh, jump in. Uh, 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 clear a few things, and you should be able to see Chrom on the normal difficulty, and you should be fine from there. Now, though, this is going to be very, very big, especially when it comes to progressing from that early game into about that mid game area. Your Eld Water is obviously going to matter immensely. So. How do you save on that? All right. Here are a couple tips right now. All right. So unbinds only do them on purchase prints. All right. Only use only use excuse me. Only use keys which are acquired through events and the event compendium. Only use them on purchase prints rather than welfare prints. Similar to of how you have acquired um, hitting the books. All right. Those are cases to as where you want to use keys, mainly because their L water is just much, much greater. And either way, you only want the second, third, and fourth unbinds to be used with keys because the first unbind is relatively cheap. So, so you're also saving on keys from there. Keys are incredibly important for for you for you beginner players. So maximizing your keys and maximizing your L water saving is very, very good. Also, also, um, when it comes to prints, most do tend to have the same abilities. For example, 
For example, we have three Flurry Strength prints in the game, being Flash of Genius, Memory of a Friend, and one that came out recently that I'm not quite remembering uh, the name of. I did I, I, I did show it off a little earlier, so feel free to dig back up for that name, uh, just, if, uh, just, just if you want to. But, but, but even though they have the same ability, you can acquire them all, because, because, because well, much rather than making a copy of that print, it is going to be more expensive than just buying that print, doing, doing the first, first unbind via Eldwater, then two, three, and four being keys. That is going to add up to cheaper than just doing one copy. And also, copies. Only do them if you need them. All right, and, and also, not every print needs copies as well. So being very, very aware of your copies, that is going to help you immensely as well. Now though, now though, around this point as well, um, um, you should be like um, upgrading your hitting the books to their to their appropriate weapon, to their weapon 40% um, skill air sprint, or or also um, upgrading your uh, I'm, I'm scrolling real quick. Uh, give me a minute. I'm just making sure. Okay. And and also like um, upgrading your your floor devastation from from four star to a five star to where it only affects like water, for example, or dark. Simple stuff like that. So so then this is this is where you can start to try and maximize some of your your options. So for example, we have lapis over here. Okay. So when it comes to to my lapis, for example, I do fulfill the requirements of the of the uh, flores of the flores strength, um, um, the appropriate skill damage and the crit rate as well. But then, but then also you have some flex options. All right, flex options may, may be a uh, crit damage. Um, crit damage it's kind of a flex option because if a unit naturally has a lot of crit rate, you can just naturally put it on. But if they don't, you can skip out on it. But also a Punisher print as well. Most do have a five star and four star variant. Some do not. For example, when it comes to Frostbite right now for water, it's only available as a four star. Versus like Fire, Burn, or and or Scorchrend, it's only available as that five star. But also we have some that are available as both. Like right now we have we have um, Wind Poison. Wind or Dark Poison, uh, whatever. Um, the, um, they have one print as a 5 star and one print as a 4 star. So you can run either or, it makes it more flexible. But, but the thing for Xander, for example, because he's more uh, 4 strike based, I obviously dropped a, I dropped a, the crit damage and I was able to put on more 4 strike. Th that way his 4 strikes just hit that much harder. And and also I was able to activate his, his little affinity boon as well. Boons, they do not count toward the total win print cap. So, so for example, a force strike here, it says the max of 50%. This 5%, that can still stack on top of it. And to, to, to as of which, there are still multiple boons. There's crown, axe, sword, bow, lance. These are all very, very good stuff. But then also when it comes to my uh, uh, um, healer, um, I typically built her around uh, around making sure her buffs last a while as well as her making sure she can heal accordingly and get her skills quickly so this is typically what what you want to look for in some units this is a very very simple image right here this is like the most dummy down possible so so do look out for these accordingly and and well also when it comes to purchasing prints from from the shop as well you should do the recommended i do recommend you buy the recommended those are recommended for a reason i typically agree with them but get what you need all right whatever team you're building get get what you need just if just if you're part of a community or know some people feel free to ask them for more help as well like friends are really really good with this game oh, oh. Or hell, you can even a ask in the comment section, or or even ask in, in in my Discord server. We we always help with this type of stuff. It's pretty pretty good over there. So so now that uh, we have uh, that stuff, um, 
um, this um, this type of format should typically work for high dragons and agitos but once when you start doing dominions you can upgrade even further because you get because you get yourself an additional two whimprint slots so this opens up a lot of possibilities i'm taking my galazethia here for example um i feel the the, the strength the the skill damage and the crit rate right now but then also but then also i also have something called a psalm here right psalms are really really good i recommend when you start doing dominions you start to work up the psalm prints because we, 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 well, as you can see here if it's maxed out um um you only need one affinity in order to max it out so for example swords you need four in order in order to get the affinity with this print this will remove three of those requirements so therefore you only need the one so with this now i have i have here a small courage this will this will this will provide that affinity as well as half of the skill damage required so so then for the last main slot i have another skill damage 20 percent so therefore i'm maxing out that skill damage i'm getting an additional strength eight percent on top of the flurry strength which is very very good um four strength is honestly a little bonus for this because affinities do increase the might just a little bit so so small flex option right there small flex but but also crit damage that being a flex option because i'm running crit rate as well as well as a dagger backline that will go more into team building so, so don't worry too much about backlines uh, right now. That's definitely more of the team building uh, side of things. Poison Punisher, once again, that's more on the team comp side, and everything else is required, is acquired or whatever. And then now for an AI, for example, um, a very very similar situation, except obviously I don't have flurries. I just have uh, one HP seven percent or above. I have crit rate and strength. Those are pretty simple. Um, also, my poison puncher is a is a four star here. That way, I can actually that way I can actually have have the crit rate be consistent. And once again, I have the skill damage and the psalm acquired accordingly. Um, I do have a, a support unit here, but he's more of a unique case, so I'm going to skip over him. But this does work for him, just in case if uh, you are uh, curious. By the way, I'm one shy of 13k. Lel. But however, when it comes to healers slash buffers, this is almost, well, more on the healer side, right? I am maxing out my skill haste via boon and and in prince as well. I, I, I have almost maxed max buff buff skill time in the in the prince, and it is maxed out in the affinities. This this is built around her you can do this for her defense buffs but also this can affect her shared skills as well so so, so therefore a, a over damage shared skill which is which is a special skill to as of where you do you really have another hit and more damage every every single regular hit you do which is pretty nice well not regular hit every hit you do which is nice so therefore that is lasting longer she's getting her, her heals up more and this is just going to help out healers immensely. And, and as for buffers, you do want to focus a little bit more on buff time rather than the skill haste. So that is just stuff to keep in mind as always. And I feel like on that note, I did about cover everything. Um, um, obviously, not every single unit can be built in the same way. This is just mostly general. There are certain cases to as of where some units do want to be built in certain other ways. Uh, let's see if I actually... Yes, okay, so I do have it on you like this. Um, um, this is very close to, to of what you want in certain cases. Um, this is this is more auto comp based, but however, the, the, the strength double buff and, and there's another print called a crit damage double buff. Uh, let me actually uh, pull that up uh, very quickly. Uh, you. You, yes. Um, these 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 are most paired with units that have a defense buffing skill on their first skill because typically those are quicker to acquire. Hence, 
double buff meta. That's what this is called, where you have strength double buff, critical damage double buff, and crit rate on a unit, and you just go ballistic. The, that, that is the requirement for a double buff setup. So, so, so this is a unique case only and this only and this can only be used in in Agito and below you cannot use this in Dominion because Dominion literally scratches double buff meta. Double buff meta was too powerful the Hildy was made to counter double buff and her in specific so so that's a grand old time grand old time and with that I believe that officially covers everything so hopefully you did end up enjoying this video Hopefully you guys now know how to how to more appropriately use your Wimprints and as well as being able to progress through Wimprints all the way to the Dominion era. So hopefully you are looking forward to more guides. I do definitely have one more planned and that will be that will be linked for team building whenever I get to that. That should be relatively soon, so do be patient for that. And I do apologize if this one took a little longer than others. I needed some time off. It was it was only a little bit. I needed some time to think, but hey, I'm here in the end. It is done. So hopefully you did find this informative, and I'll see you all next time with more guides and sh and shenanigans like that. See ya.